when devices are communicating between each other on a network, they're either using something called a unicast, a broadcast, or a multicast. A unicast is what we usually traditionally think about whenever we're sending information from one device to another. There's simply two devices that are involved in this communication, and generally it's something that is private information or it's intended to go just to this destination. It's not really intended to go to anyone else on the network. So whether we're doing something like file surfing, we're going to Google and we're pulling down information or we're going to do a file transfer from one device to another. It's generally a unicast that is done so that we can perform that particular function. For things like streaming media, of course, this doesn't scale very well. If we had many people going to a single streaming media server and each one of those was setting up a separate channel, it obviously requires the streaming media server to start sending out more and more and more bandwidth every time a new person starts requesting information from those servers. And that's why for streaming media, we have other options available, at least when we're doing streaming media on a local network. We want to be sure that we're able to send information as efficiently as possible. And the unicast certainly fits the bill for a number of these web surfing and file transfers that we might be doing. A broadcast is the other end of the spectrum, where we're sending out a single frame, we're sending a single packet onto the network, and we're sending it to many, many devices all at the same time. In this particular case, everybody on what we call this broadcast domain is going to see this packet that we've sent out. These packets are one single frame and one single packet, which makes it very efficient. And it is seen by everybody on the network. Every computer sees this packet coming through, recognizes that it's a special broadcast packet, removes it from the network, copies it into memory, and then processes it. So it's not even an option. If it's a broadcast, everybody has to at least look at the data and the information inside of that broadcast frame. And this means that we're only going to be able to broadcast in what we call our broadcast domain. It's generally a very local subnet, for instance. There's no way you could take a single frame, put it out onto the internet, and expect every single person on the internet to be able to see that particular frame. There's just no practical way to make that work. And if, if there was, we would end up not having an internet that would work very well. So that's why broadcasts are kept on a very small subnet of the network. Generally, it is your local subnet, and we call that the broadcast domain. You generally see these types of requests or these types of broadcasts going out for management functions or for a system to find another one. Things like an ARP request is sent to everybody on the network. If I need to know where my router is, I'll send a message out saying, where is 192.168.1.1? Please send me your MAC address so that I can then communicate with you directly via unicast. You also see routers often sending router updates through methods like this, at least some of the older routing technologies. Some of the newer routing technologies don't use broadcasts anymore. They use another method to make them a lot more efficient than that. And that newer, more efficient method is called a multicast. This is a little bit of a mixture between a unicast and a broadcast. We're still sending out one frame, but we're sending out this one piece of information to only the systems that are interested in receiving it. So there's something that needs to be done by the end stations to essentially subscribe or make themselves available to receive these types of multicasts. So this is clearly one device sending to many devices simultaneously. We see this a lot for local type of multicasts multimedia delivery. It's used a lot in the stock exchange to send ticker information and requests for purchases of stock. Those transactions tend to occur over this multicast. The stock exchange sends out a request, this person would like to buy stock. And all of those different providers, those purchasers and sellers of the stock, will receive that via a multicast. This is obviously then a very specialized function. It's not something that you generally see because it requires a special bit of software running on these end stations to be able to receive the multicast. And it also does not scale across many, many large networks. We generally don't do a lot of multicast on the internet. We're still using unicast, for instance, to view something on YouTube, to view a live stream on Ustream or Justin TV. Those are unicasts that are going directly to your computer just because of the challenges involved in scaling multicasts across multiple routers and multiple switches that might all be made by different manufacturers. But whether we're using a unicast, a broadcast, or a multicast, 
we are still able to transfer that information. We just have to design our networks differently to be able to receive it.